Good morning. Pray you all are doing well. Uh, we've been praying that even though this is virtual, that God would speak in powerful ways this morning. Uh, I know personally he's been working in my heart this week uh, to just have faith. So if you're watching this, just say faith. If you're watching this, type faith. The Lord has really been teaching me to just have faith this week. He's been teaching me this word all over again. And I pray that after you uh, listen to this sermon, get involved in this sermon, uh, that God would start doing a new work in your heart uh, to just have faith. So if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Romans chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 5 for the next two to three weeks and ask God to do a new work in our hearts, specifically a work of faith. So if you're sitting beside someone at home or if your husband is still sleeping, just scream out faith and wake them up. And so Romans chapter 5, I'm going to read verses 1 through 5. Pray for our time this morning. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by what? Faith. And to this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations hardships, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who He has, who he has given to us. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that you would give me the words to speak this morning. That, Father, we trust and have faith uh, that you can work through uh, the online. Through those that are watching, Father, we have faith that you will work this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're like me, the past two mornings, I've received good news. And the good news is this, fall is coming. Amen. Fall is coming. It has felt very wonderful the past Two mornings at least, and uh, praise God that summer is going away. And all those that hate the heat said, Amen. And so fall is coming, and so we know during the fall time, the, the tradition is this. We go to a corn maze, and we try to find our way through the corn maze. And sometimes, if you're like me, when I was growing up, I would push my friends down and just trample over them. Because we had a rule that whoever got through the maze first would win. And so just like with a corn maze in life, hardships come, suffering comes. And as Christians, we have to learn to just kind of maneuver through it, doing it God's way. And so we have to learn how to work through the hardships as individuals, as families, and as a church we have to ask ourselves the question, how should a Christian work through the hardships of life? Because throughout almost every book in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, hardships will happen. And so the question I want for us here at Peace is to ask ourselves, how should we work through the hardships? Especially in this season. So, hardships can make life foggy and bitter our emotions can take over and our eyes can become numb and paralyzed to God's word we can lose heart and live in confusion rather than faith we aren't the first ones to struggle with this our brothers and sisters throughout the old and new testament had to be equipped to deal with the pains and the struggles of life God's way and so I'm learning afresh that if I'm not careful, the hardships in life, the sufferings in life, it can cause a fog around your life. And if we're not careful, we'll live in the fog rather than living in faith. If you're sitting beside someone, say faith. That's the word I really want you to get in your minds for the next few weeks. You need to have faith. 
Amen. You need to have faith. And now, I don't have all the answers for us this morning. And I can't imagine what some of you watching this are going through. But I do want to give you some encouragement based on God's word. So, throughout both the Old and New Testament, the Lord, I think, wants us to be aware of two realities when we suffer or go through hardships. These are two realities that you see woven in the Old and New Testament when the people of God are going through hardships. So if you're taking notes, write down these two realities. First, God wants us to be aware of what he has done for us. God wants us to be aware of what he has done for us when we suffer and go through hardships. And for us, namely, he wants us to be aware that we have salvation in Christ. Second, if you're taking notes, he wants us to be aware of what he is doing in us. Namely, producing maturity, trust, faith, and Christ-likeness. So first, he wants you to be aware of what he's already done for you. You have salvation in Christ, and no hardship, no suffering can take that away from you. Second, he wants you to be aware of what he is doing inside of you. He's producing maturity, trust, faith, and Christ-likeness. And so to give you some context on Romans, Paul is at the end of his life as he writes this letter. So around 30 years, Paul has traveled thousands of miles. Some would say at least over 10,000 miles. Just imagine that, walking all those miles. So what did he do? Why did he walk so many miles? Well, we believe he visited over 50 cities. So these 30 years was full of suffering and hardships for Paul. Yet we see that Paul was so excited and energized because of the salvation work of the Lord. Paul tells you he was beat. Paul tells you he was mocked. You read the book of Acts, you see that they ran Paul out of town consistently. They even thought he was dead at one point. And so the point of me saying all of that is, listen, we can listen to Paul. <laughs> He's got experience. 30 years, over 30 years of ministry, visited over 50 cities full of hardships. Almost every city he went to, hardship. So talk back to me. I know I can't hear you, but just say hardship or say suffering. And in suffering, in hardship, we must have faith. Now, I'm going to define faith for you here in a minute. But I just want you to know Paul has the right. Paul has the experience to help us to navigate through suffering and through hardships this morning. So you see, Paul, we, we read as we read his letters, he's very aware of what God has done for him, salvation in Christ. And he's very aware of what God is doing inside of him. Trust, maturity, faith, Christ-likeness. So... If you're taking notes, write this question down. What has God done for you? What has God done for you? You see, this is the question you need to ask yourself when suffering or hardships invade your life. What has the Lord done for you? Back in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, look what it says. Therefore, having been justified by faith. What has God done for you? He has justified you. If you're watching this video, just say justified. Get that beautiful word in your head. He has justified you. Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith. If you read the previous chapters in Romans, Paul declares to all of us that we are ungodly, that we are sinful, that we were chasing our own dreams, we were chasing our own passions, we were dead, no relationship with God, but God has justified us now. So what does that word mean? It means this, God has declared you righteous. He no longer holds your sins against you. You see, we know that hardships and suffering is ultimately the cause of sin. So let me pause here. I'm not saying if you're suffering this morning or if you're going through hardships, it's because of your personal sin. But the root cause of hardships, the root cause of 
suffering is sin. We see when Adam and Eve rebel against God in Genesis chapter 3 that hardships, suffering invades the world. But the good news for the Christian is in our hardships, in our suffering, we have the eternal justification of God. And you say, well, how does that help me through my hardships? How does that help me through my suffering? Well, it's good news to know that the Lord of heaven and earth looks at you and me and says, perfectly righteous in his sight. Just let that sink in. You have been justified. Now, I don't know why that's the truth that God wants us to hear in our suffering and in our pain. But I'm trusting the Holy Spirit will just equip you, empower you to get through your hardship, to get through your suffering based on the reminder that you are justified now and forever in the mind of God. You see, we, you read the book of Romans and Paul is writing it in the context of suffering. You, you see that as you read throughout Romans. But this is the truth he wants us to be reminded of. That nothing can take away God's salvation from our lives. Even in our suffering. No hardship can take away God's salvation from you. No suffering can take God's salvation away from you, church. You see what happens in suffering, what happens in hardships is it gets foggy. We get confused. It's something we need to remind ourselves of. Even in the fog, even in the confusion, that we are perfectly justified in Christ. That nothing can take away God's love from us. Nothing can take away God's salvation from us. Now I say what I'm about to say in gentleness. In reality, we should suffer and we should go through hardships. But the good news is God justifies us. <laughs> and that's beautiful. Because none of us deserve an easy life. None of us deserve especially a life and a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But in these last days, we get to have fellowship with God because we've been justified by faith. And so I encourage you, church, swim in that beautiful truth that in the mind of God, you are eternally justified. Your sins are held against you no longer because Christ laid down his life for you. So faith, everybody say faith. Type faith. What is faith? Because it says here that these believers have been justified by faith. So faith is this, is you put your confidence or trust in someone or something. You put your confidence or trust in someone or something. And so listen to this for the believers. We put confidence in Christ to be saved from our sins. We've come to the conclusion that Christ is enough for salvation and relationship with the Father by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That is good news. <laughs> and again, just think about it. I've said a mouthful, but you just need to think about it. It's something that has encouraged me all week. In my suffering, God no longer holds my sin across my head. Right? And we know about the character of God. Don't we? He hates sin. He is perfectly holy. But by faith, I've put my trust, I've put my confidence in the work of Christ that he suffered, that he died for my sins. So the good news, if you're suffering or going through hardships this morning, your soul is good. Just sink, let that sink in. Your soul is good in the hands of the maker. It's good. He, the Father looks at you and says, not guilty even in your suffering. He looks at you and says, not guilty even in your hardship. That's the best news we can listen to in our hardships or in our suffering. But listen to this. Even in the fogginess of life, faith declares that you've been justified in Christ. You can't listen to the fog. You need to listen to faith. The fog tells you the Father's left you. The fog tells you there's no hope for you. The fog tells you that you've messed up big time. The Father tells you have faith. Amen? 
Put your trust, put your confidence in the finished work of Christ. Don't listen to the fog. The fog tells you to be scared. The fog tells you there's no future. The fog tells you that this pain, this suffering will never end. The fog will cause you to be all over the place, church. Faith will keep your eyes on Christ's work. The fog wants to take your eyes off Jesus. Faith says get your eyes back on Jesus. Faith will remind you that the Lord is in control. And you can rest in his power even when life seems out of control. Amen? <laughs> I'm preaching to kind of an empty room this morning, but that excites me. Because Pastor Steve... It's easy to get caught up in the fog. It's easy to get caught up in the worry. It's easy to get caught up that, man, there's no future. But faith tells me there is a future because Jesus rose from the dead. There's victory in Christ, and I can fully trust him this morning. You see, church, I'm assuming some of you are just living in the fog right now. You, you just feel weighted down. And that's what suffering does. It'll weigh you down. That's what hardships will do. It'll weigh you down. But faith will pick you up. Amen? So, faith will help you to keep your life in order when hardships come. Faith will help me not to compromise my character when life is throwing me curveballs, church. In other words, listen to this. If you're taking notes, just write this down. I need to be reminded of what Christ has done for me when life is full of hardships so that I can stay level-headed and stay on mission. I need to be reminded of what Christ has done for me when life is full of hardships so that I can stay level-headed and stay on mission. Because again, the fog will take you all over the place. I mean, how many of you like driving in the fog? <laughs> I mean, if you do, <laughs> you're kind of weird. It's not fun driving in the fog. It's hard to see what is coming. And likewise, in life, if you're not careful, you're going to let the fog get in the way of seeing that your Lord is in total, complete control right now. Hardships and suffering will cause a foggy life. But faith will remind you, my God is in total control right now and nothing can take his power out of his hands. Church, if you're navigating through the fog, the best thing you can do is put your mind back on the cross because it's on the cross that God shows us he's in perfect control. Amen? Because <laughs> Jesus rose from the dead three days later. You see, it was foggy for the disciples. They didn't know what was going to happen to them. But three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and he appeared to them for 40 days, showing them that he's in total, complete control right now. Right now, it may seem foggy, but have faith because faith will get you through the fog and you'll see that Jesus is truly risen from the dead. You'll see that Jesus is truly in control right now. So church, I know life is foggy for many of you. There's no telling what a lot of you are going through this morning. So keep fighting. Don't give up. It's easy to give up. But I'm trusting that God will give you the faith. Everybody say faith. If you're in here, say faith. If you're watching, say faith. Type faith. Get faith in your head. Have trust. Have confidence that God is going to get you through this. Paul gives us an illustration from the Old Testament in the previous chapter, chapter 4 of Romans. And the illustration is this. It's specifically, if you go to Romans chapter 4, verses 13 through 25, he gives you an illustration. Um, Abraham and Sarah were in a hardship, but faith was at play. You see, God has always wanted his, pe wanted his people to have faith, to trust in him, to have confidence in him. Even when life is foggy, even when hardships continue to happen, God is screaming out, have faith. <laughs> and so listen to this. Abraham was about 100 years old and was still waiting for the Lord to deliver his promise to Abraham and Sarah. So 25 years prior to that, when Abraham was 75 years old, God looked at Abraham and says, through you, 
And with your relationship with Sarah, I'm going to send the promised seed. And so Abraham waited 25 years for the God to deliver on this promise. Just imagine, what would you do in 25 years knowing God promised to do something in your life? Just imagine when you got to year five. I mean, for us, two weeks we go insane, don't we? I know I do. Waiting on the Lord for two weeks is hard. Abraham waited on the Lord for 25 years. And so the question we got to ask ourselves, what held Abraham in those 25 years? Paul tells you faith. Faith. He trusted God. But you see that God worked out this faith in Abraham. For example, just go to Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And not being weak in faith, talking about Abraham, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. In the deadness of Sarah's womb, verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Amen? God did a work in Abraham's heart of faith. You see, it's God that's got to do the work of faith in us. We can't produce faith on our own self, in our own beings. We, we just can't produce faith. God has to do this work in us. And so let me pause in this sermon. Something you need to be praying for, peace, is that God will do a work of faith in our hearts. That's something you need to be praying for the rest of this week. God, produce faith in your people. Produce trust. Produce confidence in your people. Help us to have faith in Christ. Help us to trust that you know what you're doing, Lord. This season at peace hasn't caught you by surprise. The Lord knows exactly what he's doing. And we see in Romans chapter 4, verses 19, 20, and 21, that God is producing this faith in Abraham. You see, it's going to take a supernatural work of God to produce faith in his people here at peace. And so what helped Abraham in those 25 years? Faith. God working in his life. Because let's remember, God continued to appear to Abraham through those 25 years. And see, something I know that I need <laughs> when I go through hardships is I just need God to appear to me. God appears to me in his word. He appears to me with answered prayer. I mean, even this week, I've seen God just supernaturally, providentially work in his world. God knows how to appear to his people whenever we are suffering or going through hardships. But understand this. Abraham wasn't perfect in those 25 years. Abraham struggled. Right? He tried to rush God. Right? We know Abraham took Sarah's maidservant and had a baby with her. <laughs> Why? Because Abraham was impatient. Abraham was impatient with God, trying to rush God. But that's good news for us because we do the same thing. We try to rush God in our suffering and in our hardships. The best thing we can do, and the psalmist tells us constantly throughout the psalms, wait on the Lord. <laughs> in your hardships, in your suffering, don't rush God, just wait on God. And how do you wait on God? You just pray. You pray to him. You continue to be on mission. I mean, you continue to study his word. You don't, waiting on God doesn't mean I'm lazy. It means I'm active while I wait on deliverance from my hardship or from my suffering. So Abraham teaches us, like, we just need to have faith. And specifically for the Christians, the best thing we can do is remind ourselves Romans chapter 5, verse 1, that we have been justified by faith. That in my suffering, in my hardships, the best news I can hear is that I am in tune with the Father in heaven because of Jesus Christ alone. That I have a relationship with the Lord himself in my suffering and in my trials. That God doesn't hold me accountable to my sins any longer specifically sins that lead me to hell and sins that lead me to no relationship with him, that I have been perfectly forgiven in his sight. I've been called to live a life for him in my suffering, in my hardships. 
And so let's finish the rest of verse 1 in chapter 5. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, say justification. If you're watching this, say justification, type justification. Justification, meaning I'm no longer guilty before God because I'm in Jesus. <clears throat> Nothing I can do. It's all of what Christ has done for me. It leads to peace with the Lord. So justification, I'm no longer guilty, leads me to have peace with the Lord. What's peace? Well, this is a military term, right? And we know as we study the Old Testament, Paul, who would have known the Old Testament, peace is a good thing among nations. It's kind of what we consider a peace treaty among nations. Well, listen, we're not at odds anymore with each other, right? We signed the treaty. We got each other's back. And so what Paul is trying to communicate to us, listen to this, in your trials, in your suffering, listen, Jesus Christ has signed the perfect peace treaty that anybody can sign. <laughs> this is the best peace treaty that man has ever heard about. Specifically, the peace treaty is this. You have faith in Jesus and what he's done for you. You get to have a eternal relationship with the Father now and forever. All hostility is done between you and God. See, I, something I've learned in my suffering and in my trials, if we're not careful, our emotions will lead us astray. Our own thinking will lead us astray. Specifically, listen to this. Whenever you go through hardships, whenever you go through suffering, you can have this tendency to think, God is against me. Based on that verse, I have peace with God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God's not against you in your suffering. God's not against you in your hardships. Now, sometimes God may use suffering. God may use hardships to just get your attention. But that doesn't mean he's against you this morning. You see, what God wants you to start learning about in your suffering, in your hardships, is that you're good with him. Ultimately, because you're in Christ. Because if you're sitting down right now and you're suffering and going through hardships, the tendency is to think that the Lord has forgotten about me. The Lord is against me. The Lord doesn't love me. But based on the authority of God's word, you have peace with the Father through our Lord, our Master, Jesus Christ, Messiah. So what do you need to hear in your suffering and in your hardship? That you get to have a relationship with the God that you, by nature, used to be against. You see, in your suffering, you get to team up with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and they walk with you through your suffering and through your hardships. God doesn't leave you. The psalmist says what? He will never forsake you. Amen. This is the same God. He didn't leave Abraham. He didn't leave Noah. He didn't leave David. He didn't leave Solomon. He didn't leave Isaiah. He didn't leave none of the prophets. He has walked with his people for all of human history, and he's walking with us right now. <laughs> you see, church, what you need to hear in this season of hardship is that God is walking with Peace Baptist Church. Now, I'm not saying God doesn't ever allow you to suffer in hardship because of you. But I am saying that you have to be careful with thinking that God is not walking with me right now because I'm suffering and going through hardships. This could be the season where God really wants to get our attention and say, have faith. Have faith. Have faith. And so, peace, I leave you with this this morning. What is God trying to teach you? I think you read the book of Romans. He helps you to walk through suffering and hardships. Ultimately, he's trying to just teach us to fall in love with him. To understand that in Christ alone, we can stand, church. We can stand in our suffering and in our hardships because Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne this morning. Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne when you suffer. Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne whenever you're trying to navigate through the corn maze of life. So, peace, I encourage you. <laughs> Fall in love with Jesus this morning. In your suffering, in your hardships, Jesus Christ is walking with his people. And as we walk through these verses in the next few weeks, 
I mean, you're going to see the goodness of God is upon the people of God in suffering and hardships. Nothing can take away justification from you. Nothing can take away this peace treaty we have in Christ from you. So quit letting the devil lie to you. Quit letting the Father lie to you. Let faith kick in. And remember, God has to do the work of faith, church. I can't do it in you. You can't do it in you. We just need to get in prayer and say, God, give us faith. Grow us in faith. Produce the faith that you produced in Abraham and us. And church, understand this, that salvation is in Christ alone. And that's something you need to remember when you suffer. That even though you suffer, Christ is your Savior. And for some reason, even in my own personal life, and as I read in the New Testament, you see that this truth that Christ is Savior in my suffering is something that Paul and all the other writers keep echoing to the people of God. Christ is your Savior now and forever. So when you suffer, when you go through hardships, understand that the Father is looking at you because you're in Christ. And he is saying, well done, well done. Amen. <laughs> So let me pray for you. I pray that this message will just encourage you this morning. And I encourage you to take notes. Uh, really get these truths in your heart because I believe if we do here at peace uh, that we will see some great stuff happen whenever we are able to gather back together. Let, let me pray for you. Father, help us to have faith. Father, that's hard to do in our own strength. Father, Paul says when he was weak, God, you, that was a time for you to strengthen him. See, in our weakness, it's a time for us to become desperate for your movement. So, Father, I just pray for peace. I pray for anyone watching this. But Father, that you would produce a work of faith in us. God, you have to empower us to trust in you. God, this isn't a, something a program can do. Father, the Holy Spirit has to do this work in us. And so, Father, the same faith that justified us, Father, we're going to see is the same faith that equips us to work in and through the hardships of life. So, Lord, be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll keep you updated this week on, on uh, when we're going to return here as a gathering. Uh, just continue to pray. And until then, uh, have some faith. God bless you all.